Okay, now what? All right, so time to get started. We're gonna start laying out the frame and putting the pieces together. bolts I got are a little long. I might have to order some shorter ones. All right, so less than 10 minutes into the process, I've already uh, got to stop and rethink what I'm going to do. The hardware I'm using are button head cap screws, grade 8, and a flanged locking nut, grade 8 as well. However, you know, because these, the way this, I forget what they call this type of locking nut, but it's tighter at the top here, so when you tighten it down, it's it expands and is force fed into the bolt basically so it's kind of a one and done type deal once you tighten it down you don't want to undo it so I don't want to tighten these down and use these to draw the frame together plus the holes most of the holes are um, too small for the bolts so they need drilled out and I got to get it pulled into some kind of shape and align before I do that so what I'm going to do is get some slightly smaller bolts and nuts and use those to kind of force the frame into position and then take them out one at a time, drill them for the new bolts before I put those in. But you can basically, you, know, you got to start somewhere. I can see already where I have my, my thought process has uh, come up short. Yeah, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. You can see back here where I'm going to be stepping up my frame in the back. Uh, basically the cross member rear cross member is going to be uh, one frame width higher and then I will weld those together I'm probably gonna weld my entire frame together or at least you know weld it and bolt it it's not going to be just bolted so it's gonna be welded and bolted but anyway this back here I'll be welding in you know strengthening plates and corner gusts and stuff to make this all look a lot better than just the frame stuck on top of it but that's a long ways off yet so, but you can see the, what it's going to be. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to be able to do today. I got a late start and uh, the place I need to go to get the bolts is already closed. So yeah, I'm just going to take it back apart and we'll be done for the night. And we'll have to go and come at it later again. So while the frame was upright, I went ahead and put in these bolts using smaller uh, quarter inch and five sixteenths for the bigger holes so they fit in easier and obviously I'm going to change all this out but for now and they're just all finger tight for now but what I'm going to do is use this to draw the frame together and into position get everything locked into place I've gone ahead and done the center cross member while I was standing upright just to make life easier for myself now I gotta lay the frame back down and do the um, front cross member and then once I get all those bolts in, I'll clamp the rear cross member back into place and then take all my measurements to make sure everything's square and then tighten everything up. Again, remeasure, make sure everything's square. And once we get to that point, I can start taking these bolts out one by one and replacing them with the permanent bolts.
Okay, so what I've done here is I've just put bolts in loosely in the middle cross member and the front cross member to where I can get out of them easy. They're all just finger tight right now. Then using these ratchet straps, I put a lot of tension on to pull the frame rails in together around the cross members. That one's a little lower. Uh, and now I gotta get out a tape measure and start measuring uh, some holes to make sure I'm square. And um, once I get it knocked into square, I will tighten all those bolts down. Then I'll be able to take these bolts back out one at a time and drill and tap them for the bigger bolt. Run those in. On the rear cross member, I've got this kind of clamped into position here. It's not exact, but it's close. And But if you come over to the other side, you can see I'm a good half inch out here. So I'm going to have to get another uh, ratchet strap and pull the rear rails together as well before I start measuring. Well, unfortunately, my uh, printer is out of ink. So I'm going to try to work from a uh, drawing on my iPad and try to measure some of these uh, distances to see how bad my frame is. So looks like 26-ish here. That's pretty close to right on. And this is supposed to be 25 and a quarter, but it's almost an inch out of whack. And I'm gonna guess that is because this frame horn here is pretty tweaked out. Yeah, we only think it's about a half inch, but I'm not positive. Maybe they're both. No, this one's, this one. This one's pretty flat, so it's not really that one. So, gotta do some work on that frame horn. Front cross member needs a little work here. So 29 and a quarter at these two holes. That one's really close. It's like a 16th off. That's not bad. 32 and a quarter here. That's another one only about a sixteenth off. 34 at the next set. That's dead on. 36 and a quarter. It's off for like an eighth. Or not an eighth, a sixteenth maybe. So the frame width going down is good. So that's encouraging. Got that one frame horn out there that's kind of tweaked out. I could see that before, so something will have to be done with that. Uh, not a hard part. Looking at it, I'm guessing this rail's a little out of square and it's going to be banged in some that way. Alright, so I think I'm a little out of square. I'm not sure I need to, how I need to shift it yet. I'm not sure. I know that front cross member or that front frame horn is a little tweaked. This leg back here might be a little tweaked out as well. All right, so I basically took a week off for Thanksgiving. I went to Ohio to travel, see family. But what I had determined in the previous section was after a lot of measuring that my uh, frame was slightly out of square. Um, the front half seemed pretty square, except for up here by the frame rails. The driver's side frame rails a little tweaked. Need to straighten it out a, little, a bit. But back to the center cross section, everything seemed to be good and square. 
And then as you went to the back, uh, the driver's side frame rail seemed to tweak out. And um, at the longest distance from basically the front cross member to the rear cross member, I was about a quarter inch out. So I want to fix that. So I've taken it all back apart. And I've got the frame rails laid out here side by side. And if you go down it, you can see they're the same. And so you get up here by the front rail. And as you go back to about, well, there, they're, they're still level. And then from there, it kind of back and starts getting out until they're not the same back here. So now I'm going to figure out where I need to start bending this back to get it back into square. All right, so I'm going to try to straighten this front frame board uh, using my hydraulic press. I'm going to try to press in from the opposite side of where I think the crease or bend is. You know, there's no obvious crease, so it's kind of hard to tell. I've never done something like this, so we'll see how this works. So I'm bending a little bit at the back part of the curve, releasing the pressure, then moving it full and sliding the rail back a little bit so the uh, ram is closer to the front of the frame horn, then repeating the process, trying to slowly bring that curve back. I'm also trying not to go too far at once and make the problem go the other way. All right, let's go check it. All right, so I gained a little bit back, but not much. So back to the experiment. I put a lot more force on it this time than I did last time. So I think we're gonna get further on this track. Definitely have the rail a lot flatter right now, it just depends on how much it springs back. So when I let it go, it definitely made progress that time. It is very, very slowly getting there. Visually, I'm getting them very close. I mean, when you throw this on here, you got not quite an eighth inch gap for the run of that ruler. And on this side, it's an eighth plus. I mean, it's much better than the three eighths inch I started out with, but still not good. And this might be what I end up doing. I know I can put these, put the rails together. I know the front section's square and just this frame horn's tweak. So I know I could make a re relief cut, 
straighten it, weld it back. And that may be what I end up doing just to speed things along. Uh, I don't know how much more effort I'm gonna put into trying to straighten this on the press. Okay, so the front frame horn isn't perfect yet. Not by a long shot. Like, uh, uh, less than an eighth. Anyway, decided to move on to try to get the kink in the mid section of the rail. Try to get that straightened out. I'm using a uh, body hammer dolly to try to curve it the way I want it to go. We'll see how that works. I've got the frame rail chained between, chained around a, another heavier channel piece of steel, sandwiching my floor jack, and the idea is I will pump the floor jack, the chains will go taut, and bend the frame in the direction I want. Looks like it bit, but I'm not sure that's a good thing. Definitely bit my steel here. I think it went a little bit. It definitely bent. Now the question is how much and is it the right amount? To know that, I gotta put it all back together again. Okay, so now, not only is the frame much more visually symmetrical kind of hard to tell in a video i suppose especially with all the crap i've got in my garage the front left frame horn is still a little tweaked we'll work on that i think if nothing else i can make some relief cuts and bend it to the place i want re-weld it since that's not really structural at that point i'm not too worried about that but i measured from the front radiator hole mounts to the rear body mounts and I'm now out a sixteenth of an inch side to side. That I can live with. So next thing to do I'm going to blow it apart one more time and uh, these areas these areas in here where I won't be able to get to later and around, you know, in, in or here with this cross member. And at the back, I'm gonna strip those down where I can, if, because I can't get into those and I'm gonna hit them good with a rust reformer. And uh, then we'll start putting the frame together permanently. Okay, so I got the frame all bolted back together, uh, but I've got the temporary bolts in there, the ones I won't be using permanently. Um, going to be replacing those with grade eight bolts and hardware. But my flange nuts look like this. They're all bright and shiny with zinc coating. I don't want that. I want to remove the zinc coating like I've done on these. And so they won't be, I think the paint will stick better to them in the end. And plus they won't stick out as much if, uh, you know, I don't want any shiny stuff showing. So the way I remove that zinc coating, my little tip for you, take a pill bottle. I got I keep all kinds of different sizes of pill bottles for doing stuff like this. Put all your shiny, Ooh, one got away. Put all your shiny orange nuts in the pill bottle. Then you take cleaning vinegar, 
not white vinegar, not regular vinegar, but cleaning vinegar. It's a stronger concentration and it's more acidic. And it's got all kinds of purposes in the garage. You can dilute it with uh, like distilled water and use it as a metal prep. But all I'm gonna do right now is pour in enough to submerge the nuts. Oop, wrong one. And then I was basically gonna let these sit overnight. Maybe shake them a few times, but uh, they'll come out looking all with a nice black oxide finish like this. So these have been soaking for about 24 hours, longer than normal. But See, so you rinse them off. We've got black coating on them. What I normally do is take my generic blue grease removing uh, dish soap and I wash them up. Rinse them off, and they got a black oxide coating. It doesn't stand out so bad. And here they are, all dried up and ready to go. All right, so I got my clean nuts here. No longer golden shiny, kind of gray and dingy, but clean. I like them this way. And uh, my frame is all bolted together and tight and square. So the next step is to start taking these bolts out one at a time, drilling them for the permanent button head cap screw bolts, grade eight hardware. Gonna be using a uh, red permanent, must remove with heat, thread locker, not sponsored, hashtag not sponsored, sponsor me, uh, stuff on all the bolts with these Grade 8 flange nuts. So I'll take one out, drill it, do the other side, measure, repeat, 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 repeat. You get the idea. Anyway, let's uh, get to it. So that's going to do it for chapter one of my hot rod story. Get my frame together, mostly. I still got to, I got to put on my rear cross member. But that's going to require me to fire up the old hot metal glue gun. And um, to be honest, I haven't fired up my welder and anger in many, many years now. So that's going to require me to take a break from the hot rod and work on a little side project that's going to help me brush up on my welding skills. So that's pretty much it for now. Till next time, YouTube. Take it easy.